am the proud son of a preacher, which means that I am long-winded and I come by it honestly. So, to kind of curb that a little bit, I wrote it down. If I did not do that, we would be here for a while. So work, so, so work with me. All right. First and foremost, peace. Um, thank you to the Harvard Office for Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging, Harvard Affinity Celebrations, Recognizing Black Graduates, the Student Advisory Committee, not only for inviting me to be the faculty speaker, but also for noting, and I quote, my strong commitment to social justice on issues related to, but not limited to, race, class, and education, end quote. Now, I'm particularly pleased about that part because it makes me feel affirmed that you have received the safety that I tried to provide in my seven years here at Harvard, be it in my classroom, on campus, or online. I'm also taking it as a sign that you are not expecting, do not go gently into that good night from me. What will your verse be or the carpe diem shtick, which is all good, no shade, and wonderful quotes, but platitudes that frankly may ring hollow, considering all the sobering truths that we have witnessed in recent months up to this moment. Your moment. In many ways, a moment of truth, wherein truth has transcended a moment to a movement. In this, your senior year, we have seen streams of obscene scenes from the screens of our smart devices of unconscionable brutality perpetrated against the Philistine people. By, way, by the, the, the apartheid state of Israel with the banking and bombs of its accomplice, the United States. Here and around the world, students, faculty, alumni, organized, mobilized resistance movements to fight our own institutions, facilitation of the dehumanization of the Philistine people. And in a cold twist of irony, using technology as a tool of Philistine liberation was made possible by a conflict blood mineral, cobalt, that contributes to the dehumanization and decimation of millions and millions more Congolese people. Cobalt is in our cars, appliances, laptops, smart watches, Fitbits, CT scans, children toys, clawed out of the rugged earth by the bare hands of enslaved Congolese, children, women, and men. Cobalt has made the Democratic Republic of Congo one of the richest countries in the world, mineral riches, but its people among the poorest. Subjected to atrocities, genocide backed by the usual suspects, Israel, the United States, and insert your favorite tech company here, among others. Speaking of which, I, like many of you, use my platforms on social media to fight the good fight. With millions of followers to suppress, yet these apps suppress our advocacy and suspend our accounts while they profit from our conscientious content. Politically, we are right to reject voting for the lesser of two evils, while being forced to utilize the necessary evil of our press's products to fight the oppressor. And if it feels as though we have been cross-contaminated in this capitalist conundrum, remember that venom is a primary ingredient in the, in the, the creation of anti-venom. And so goes sometimes as anti-capitalism. But alas, I am exceedingly glad to be here with you, to celebrate your achievement that is more than an academic feat, but a rite of passage, that some of your classmates are forced to fight to not be denied for de demanding Harvard's divestment from death and destruction. A decision by way of a bad faith compromise that broke with prior student protest precedent established a Philistine exception. Right here, $50 billion coffer, but what is Harvard's word worth? when it comes to protecting the people who are supposed to be the reason this institution even exists. You. We have seen this betrayal of trust play out in even more draconian fashion at other institutions of higher learning from Columbia University to UCLA. During the UC Irvine arrest of tenured professor, Dr. Tiffany Willoughby Harrard, she was asked if she was concerned about that defending pro-Palestinian students' right to assemble and protest would impact her employment at the university. Dr. Willoughby Harrod retorted, what job do I have if my students have no future? Her words struck like thunder 
in my head and echoed in my heart, where my commitment to protect and serve you resides. As your educators, not executives, your plight is our purpose, but we must model the truth and transparency that we are tasked to inspire in you. And it is in that spirit that I stand before you today, right here, right now, in real time, and share with you that I am gutted, heartbroken by the loss of loved ones for whom I grieve daily, deeply. Some I lost to death, others to life, but both leaving me at times feeling lost and in search of solace. Like in an old African-American spiritual cinema, and I ran to the sea, but the sea was boiling. I ran through the trees, but the trees were falling. I ran to the rock, and the rock cried out, no hiding place. Yet still I tried to fight the good fight, and I became ashamed of my pain. Do I have the right to lick my own wounds emotionally at a time in the world when so many people are being wounded mortally? Do I? Do you? Do we get to worry about how we're going to make a living when the people of Haiti are just trying to make it living? Do we get to wallow in self-pity and over a significant breakup with a lover or friends or family or families while families in Sudan are broken up by bullets? Do we get to struggle with despondency, depression, childhood trauma, self-doubt, self-harm, bereavement, social anxieties, eating disorders, and so forth while Philistine infants starve to death? in a man-made famine executed by ruthless Zionist overlords. And those Palestinian parents still have the unbroken, boundless faith to cradle their loved ones' skin and bones and bags of body parts, crying, Allahu Akbar. Yes. Yes, we do. Because we are all but human beings being human. These are all part of the human condition from whence our capacity for empathy springs. It is the thing that separates projection from connection, from connection when addressing the plight of other people. Whether it's personal or in protest, acolyte or activist, altruistic actions without empathy is performative, even if to some material extent it is effective. Empathy is a mustard seed, one of life's little mercies. The ties that bind us together we cannot achieve liberation by alienation from one another. It is what we do and who we are when we all we got. There is something obscenely macabre about oppressed people being pitted against one another and reduced to set tripping over whose oppression is worthy of attention, while our respective oppressors continue to ransack our resources and lay waste to our lives. Let us not construct hierarchies in the ranks of our resistance that place the pretense of purity over integrity and create a lower rung of cannon fodder that takes the fall while the leaders lavish in the limelight. A movement for equity that is not egalitarian is part of the problem it purports itself to solve. Sometimes we make bad decisions with the best of intentions. How rabble-rousing is anything one yells in a megaphone if deaf people cannot hear the words or see your lips to read them? Are we seeking signing translators? Are our encampments or our events mobility device accessible? Are we facilitating digital encampments for those who cannot be physically present? Are we using inclusive language to rally support, knowing good and well that everybody can't stand up, speak up, or even raise a fist of solidarity, but they are no less invested? We are friends indeed with diverse needs. Let us do what we can to meet them like Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar, the friends of Job, who were so distraught with grief at the sight of Job's excruciating suffering that after tearing at themselves in agony, knowing that they could not free their friend from his tribulation, they resigned to simply sitting silently on the ground with him for seven days and night. That was all they could do. And Job was consoled. So much of being there for others in need is being. Your presence is a present, a gift to the world. Even amid Israel raining bombs upon them, Palestine people posted messages of gratitude to student protesters abroad for your resistance, your persistence, your presence. Here was felt by them 
there. I hope this speech doesn't age well. One day, I hope everything I've said to you today about these issues and events become irrelevant because the issues and events have long since become the past. Unlike the words of Malcolm X about the Philistine, Sudanese, and Congolese causes in 1964 that unfortunately still apply today in 2024. I hope my words are only timely, not timeless, because all the innocents currently being murdered by malnutrition and crimes against their humanity are fed by the fruits of labor for their liberation. You are tomorrow's thought leaders today. I hope that you know that you are wonderful and powerful in all that you do and that you cannot do it all alone. No one can do everything, but anyone can do something. And together, we can do the right thing. All power to the people.